first question that both of us want to know is more or less your role um, in your present school and a bit about your career, you know, not going into the micro detail about your career, but just generally the journey you've gone on professionally, because then that's taken you to a position in this school, which is then about when leading school IP, I suppose, from that teaching and learning perspective. So if you're able to answer that for us, that'd be really helpful. Um, my name is Morgan Whitfield. I am currently a director of teaching and learning at Amity International School. And I've been lucky enough uh, to work in Canada, uh, where I'm from, and then I worked in the UK at a fantastic school in Birmingham. And then I moved to the UAE, where I've been teaching for the past decade, a uh, little more than that, actually. And I've worked in all kinds of positions. Um, I've worked as a teacher. I've spent years in middle leadership as a head of department, as a head of scholars. I then moved up to head of sixth form. So I've really got a great overview of uh, different things that a teacher, a middle leader, and a senior leader needs to know uh, to really understand uh, how to make a department or a school thrive. Okay, well, thank you very much. And the school that you're presently at, um, are you able to just share some details about that? Obviously, we know the name of the school, but how big is it and, and whereabouts is it located? So right now I'm at Amity Abu Dhabi and it's located just outside Amity in a place called Al Balia. We are a new school, our very first sixth form cohort, our year 13s are graduating this year. So what we've done is we've built the school over the past six, seven, eight years and every single year it gets bigger. And as the school grows, it gets more and more complex. The staff grows and we start to develop in a new and different way. Uh, this isn't the first time where I've been in a startup school. Um, and the, the really great thing about being in a school that's growing and developing is that you get to build systems that are particularly meaningful to you. Uh, you still have the flexibility uh, to change things because they're not entrenched. And there's this feeling of innovation that kind of permeates the entire institution. And I feel like what we've been doing this year is really embedding systems that are important to help the school really develop in the right direction. All right, thank you. And obviously, I've I personally accompanied you on the whole journey with School IP, but what, what was the reason behind choosing it? We did a lot of investigating, uh, looking at different platforms for teaching and learning uh, that we thought would be really impactful. And School IP was very special. I think the first thing that really hit me were the leadership dashboards. Uh, they were so beautiful. Uh, they gave such a great overview um, for school leaders, both middle and senior, to understand where teaching and learning had its strengths and its areas of development. And because we were able to tailor our learning walks, our, um, our lesson observations, our work scrutinies, they allow for deep dives that were really insightful and data informed. So because it was so visible and so clear and easy for leaders to use, it really helped inform the direction that the school could take. Um, on a deeper level, what School IP did and what really set it apart was that we could then link those targets to our school development plan. And that, that's part of a much larger strategic journey. Oh, okay, no, thank you. What, we personally pride ourselves in, I suppose in some cases, developing a relationship and a partnership with our schools. Um, did you find that guidance and support useful when you started using School IP? I think that that was transformational. Um, the fact that we didn't just receive technical guidance on how to embed a platform, we had you, uh, a school leader, who understood um, not just the mechanics of embedding a system, but how it can shape the culture and development of a school. Having that extensive experience kind of inform um, the direction that we wanted to take allowed us to build something much more meaningful. Um, so it was much more than a platform. It, it was something that kind of took our leadership to the next level. And it felt like we were we were guided so thoughtfully through that process. Um, so I, I really felt almost mentored um, by setting up this system. It, it, it meant a lot to make something so so valuable and impactful in the school. So 
Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, obviously, you're experienced and you know that managing any kind of change in school requires like very careful consideration when planning anything new. Um, how did you personally go about introducing school IP in your school? You know, what time scale did you use and what functionality did you use first? I think school IP started off with us saying, well, the systems that we have now, um, they're not centralized. Um, there was no idea of kind of institutional legacy building. Um, they weren't forecasting things that we needed to do. So we wanted a system, first of all, to kind of to, to address those very, those very simple needs. Um, school IP, in order to, for it to be introduced meaningfully, we first had to get our board of governors and also our senior leaders on board. And I think after doing a lot of investigating and then presenting this to senior leaders, um, it was having them understand the infrastructure that this would create for the school. And that meant a lot of discussions about, well, if we're creating a system, how do we create a lasting one? And so a lot of thought went into those first meetings with senior leaders. After that, it was about getting input from our middle leaders and making sure that the systems that we were setting up, um, again, would resonate and, and give them the insight that they needed to, to make their departments thrive. What was really fascinating is that going through the process actually made us reevaluate uh, re um, the things that were really important to us. So we ended up doing things like completely kind of renovating and modernizing our appraisal, our probation um, and performance management systems. It forced us to look at things like, well, we are using our standards, our teaching standards, our leadership standards, our teaching assistant standards based on the D of E recommendations, but we wanted to tailor those a bit for the context that we're in as an international school and also for our goals and what really matters for us in, in the context of our setting. Uh, so being asked to reevaluate th those larger things, it prompted a lot of deep discussion. Uh, so that was really powerful in terms of rollout no. yes sorry <laughs> no 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 thank you it's just insightening about the journey you've been in on so please continue yeah that's exactly what it's been it's been a journey so once once we had kind of the infrastructure and the bare bones there uh rolling out to staff um i think with any rollout um it's quite interesting because you want to make sure that the change management uh is done very carefully um, and, and slowly too, because with any new system, you don't want staff to be daunted by complexity. So we ended up rolling out uh, in January, small steps for staff to take, uh, really, really simple. We started with um, introducing it to middle leaders, going through what we thought was important with learning walks. So just starting really simply. And then after that, um, because the system was very easy to access, because we were able to then set um, all of our staff up on it and they could familiarize themselves. Um, we were able to start doing um, our interim and our final probation uh, with staff that had newly joined. And that way we were able to kind of grandfather in some staff. Um, the past six months, um, we've been able to really start embedding it and we've had a soft launch in our secondary school. And right now we are preparing for our induction in August where we're doing a hard launch with the whole system um, for our entire staff. I know, that's great, because in theory, what you've done is you've carefully planned it out. You've more or less, I suppose, mitigated most of the risks. And in an ideal world, everything would go swimmingly and nice and smoothly and everything else like that. Have there been any unexpected challenges or obstacles that you didn't foresee um, that you might be able to pass on to somebody else possibly on the similar journey to yourself? Uh, let's see. I think the advice that I would give to anyone who's kind of undertaking this journey um, is to make sure that you get the buy-in of staff by showing them how easy something would be. So the very first thing that I did when I was presenting this to all of our staff, um, as I said, let's see how we can make a three minute lesson plan. So School IP was really wonderful because you helped us develop a form for our lesson plans. 
um, which meant that it was extremely easy for staff to fill out a lesson plan form that could be printed off and uniformly looked at the things and the components that we thought were important. This cut down for our inspection readiness, um, hours and hours and hours of staff filling out redundant lesson plan forms. Uh, this meant so, so much to us. So I think that they saw their life get easier. The same for our middle leaders. When they saw that they were able to create these beautiful rubric based uh, learning walk and lesson observation forms that gave so much data, contained so much feedback and detail, yet were so easy to fill out um, online that they could carry with them on their phones if they wanted. Uh, all of a sudden, um, the ease of use, um, that was incredibly powerful. And I think making sure that staff realize that even though onboarding a new system can sometimes seem, will give you this idea of, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's one more thing that we have to do. Oh, learning something new. There's another log on that I have to remember. Um, all of a sudden when they see their life um, just become easier, um, I think that makes a huge difference. They have to they have to be able to see what's in it for them. Okay, well, thank you. Because in theory, you've shared you know the reasons for deciding to subscribe to School IP. You've shared your journey you've gone on, and I suppose you being the lead, you've had a degree of pressure to make sure it's successful. So the end is actually the impact of this. And I know recently you shared with me about a recent ins inspection you had. So I suppose that's more or less the judge of impact. One is the internal impact, the, the data it's been creating, the feedback from your colleagues, which sounds very positive. So I suppose the ultimate feedback is when you have someone external come into your school and evaluate your school. And whether, you know, I suppose whether school IP was used as a resource to show that. So if it was, you know, are you able to share possibly the impact of school IP has been on um, your school? Yes, so we were recently inspected. Results aren't out yet, but I have to say that going through the inspection process, oh, I think going forward with school IP, I felt so much more confident and I think our team felt so much more confident. I remember being in one meeting with middle leaders, so our heads of core, and we were speaking about teaching and learning. And the fact that we were so easily able to point to what was really successful in our practice because of School IP, to be able to pinpoint where we were improving because we knew our areas of weakness. Um, and being able to demonstrate that, again, the leadership dashboards were just fantastic. Um, and it gave us a lot of insight, not only to how we can improve our practice every single day, but how we are accountable and we can show how accountable we are to those results. Uh, so even in that soft launch uh, in the secondary school, it made us much more prepared for what can be a quite stressful endeavor. Inspections are never fun, but I think it was a point of pride that allowed us to show off the very best of our school. Okay, no, that, thank you very much. I suppose in some cases, as, as you've been on this journey, you've had like you've had the impact now, you've had, I suppose, the light bulb moments from yourself in our conversations, light bulb moments from your colleagues where all of a sudden all the little pieces of the jigsaw all leak together and everything else like that. And you start to understand there isn't necessarily a school IP way of doing something. You know, we we provide you with the defaults, we provide you with some functionality, but part of our in enjoyment is watching schools then develop the system. So have you any thoughts on the next steps, what you intend doing? Are you going to push the boundaries, you know, in some of our future conversations? Are you going to say, oh, can it do this or can it do that? What what is, what is your, you know, creative thoughts of how you want to develop it next? Then, If the world was your oyster. <laughs> Actually, I think that's what there was so much value in our conversations because we wanted to set the tone. Um, School IP comes with a whole bunch of templates, but we really wanted to do things in a certain way because we wanted to build a culture of coaching, for instance. So knowing that we wanted to have a more instructional coaching approach to how staff developed, how we wanted to see them um, create a portfolio, um, those things that were so important to the core of our pedagogy, the way that we believe staff can grow, the fact that we were able to tailor at every single step 
um, the way that we approach school IP, it feels very curated for us. Um, and because of that, I think we have such a sense of, of um, investment um, in the system because it is something that that we were able to build. And I was amazed at how much uh, we were able to tailor um, the language, uh, which allowed for a shared vocabulary with our staff, which is so important. Um, simple things like that uh, made a huge difference. Our non-negotiables when it comes to our learning walks. Um, the very fact that that we were able to share feedback in a selective way so that staff never felt that they were being judged when we walked into their classrooms. Um, instead, it felt like we were setting them up for success and allowing them to lead the conversation when it came to the action steps that they wanted to develop and work upon in their practice. Uh, the entire process, again, has been very reflective, uh, but it is ours. There's this huge sense of ownership um, that we were able to have a system that was built just for us. Well, no, no, thank you, because in theory, you know, you've gone on a wonderful journey, and you know, thank you very much for sharing that with us both now. And I suppose that I suppose one of the questions would be, obviously, you're an advocate, and you're very passionate about education. You're passionate about school IP, and I dare say, you know, in conversations with other colleagues in other schools, you've been mentioning school IP and everything else like that. So what are your thoughts, you know, when it comes down to it? What advice would you go for someone who came up to you and said, would you, you know, what, what do you think of school IP? Do you think it's worth us subscribing to this? What would your actual words be to them? I think that school IP, one of its strengths, I think a lot of, I think a lot of senior leaders might look at it and think, OK, well, this is great for tracking. Um, I think tracking is actually, that's a lovely aspect, but I think what was most important is it gives us such strategic direction. That's the power. The fact that we can track things, that's, that's lovely, but the fact that we are able to actually put our school development plan into school IP, and we're able, instead of having um, a document that sits there, um, that senior leaders look at, um, instead we have a very live development plan where all staff know that their objectives are linked to those school priorities. And then you can see them all every single day adding and contributing to those school priorities. So every staff know where they're going, how it's linked to the larger school priorities and helping us get there. I think having that strategic kind of vision and that ethos that all staff are contributing um, because it's there and present uh, because you can see when deadlines are, um, the strategic power it is where school IP can really make a huge, huge difference. And I feel like that is something that that has driven staff. And I think that that's where you really get to see the full capabilities of the system. No, no, no thank you very much for your kind words. And I'm, I'm, thank you very much for taking the time now to more or less give us an oversight of the school IP journey that you've been going on as a school. I suppose the, the final thing for us is as you've been creating your system and you've been talking about the passion of self-reflection and everything else like that, we do that as a company. So the whole point about it is we develop and we learn from people like you spending the time to give us feedback and everything else like that. So we also have to take it on the chin that we're trying to develop a system that not only is for your school, but for schools, colleges and everything else like that. So based upon your journey and based upon the feedback from your colleagues and looking at the functionality, have you got any key, I suppose, bits of wisdom that you could provide to us how we could improve your experience, not only from the training and the discussions with people like myself, with Liam, with those type of people, the demonstration process or the functionality of the system. Is there anything that you feel by doing this would make quite a big difference? Is there anything that you can give us some feedback on? Oh, so what um, to improve the systems or improve the system, improve your experience? You know, in theory, you've been so complimentary, um, but we always try to improve we always try 
to make things better. So I just wondered if there was anything that we could possibly do to make you and your colleagues experience or any kind of words of wisdom that they have given you and said, oh, if only it did this or only if it did that or and why does it do this? Why, why can't we do that? Those type of things, really, that would help us out so much. Um, I think the big thing is a lot of the times I look at it as uh, a teacher who is completely new to the system. Um, so how are they going to be navigating it? Um, and I think one of the things that School IP does is the videos are absolutely fantastic. Um, and those are really, really informative to, to guide those new teachers through it. Uh, but I think you were the one that send it, said it at the very beginning, Andy. Sometimes um, it's all about keeping it simple. I think yeah. sometimes you were ambitious in how much we decided to do so quickly. And I think that that's, that's really wise. Um, so I think sometimes keeping it simple, um, we, we definitely, uh, with our middle leaders, tried to do everything all at once. Um, and I'd say that's good advice. And then also to make sure that we take it in kind of those bite-sized chunks that are manageable. That's OK. So what about the actual using the software? Is there any kind of steps or anything in there that we could make your your process easier, especially when because obviously you've trained your colleagues and were there some steps in there that you're there going, well, if only this was a bit simpler or maybe this was a bit more informative. Anything along the lines that you would say, well, you know, if you were a consultant for us, you would give us some feedback to say, well, actually, you could improve this part of the system or this needs to be made simpler or this needs to be made more detailed or reporting or anything else like that. Um, I think hmm, that's actually a really good question. Um, I think that if there were links to um, our MIS, that could be really, really useful. Um, I think that that would give us something in terms of HR being a little bit easier. Sometimes it's redundant um, to have to map the school structure again. Um, the MIS the integration that we had, it was quite tricky because we'd had um, some issues with uh, our system, our MIS. So I think that we needed to work on that on our end, and I think having a little bit um, Having, having that uh, simplified, that could always be, be really, really useful in terms of the school, especially just starting out. OK, well, that, that's fine. I, I don't know if you've got any questions for us, Morgan or Liam, if you've got any questions that you want to do, because obviously we've compiled these, haven't we, Liam, between us? So the idea yep. is we've just gone through. So I don't, I don't know if you've got anything you want to ask us, Morgan. No, I, I honestly just want to say thank you. Um, it's been it's been a real journey this year, honestly. Um, I feel like we've accomplished so much, though. I feel like the systems that we have now, the, the infrastructure, um, it, it feels like we were riding a rickety bicycle before and now we have a Lamborghini. So. <laughs> and the thing is, we're still learning how to drive it, but we can feel the power. The engine is there. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for, for helping us on this journey. It, it's been wonderful. No, no, that, thank you very much. And thank you very much for giving up your time, Morgan. So that, it's <laughs> no been a great pleasure to talk. So obviously our next steps and obviously we're